So what happens as we get older? We have these repeated injuries to the disc, lifting, bending, playing football, playing hockey, skiing, rock climbing, whatever your, your poison is. And over the course of a lifetime, these injuries kind of build up. The disc starts to wear out, it starts to shrink. As the disc starts to shrink, there isn't enough tension anymore, and so the bones start to move a little bit. And the body knows that that's not supposed to happen. There's not supposed to be any abnormal motion. So in response, the body tries to stabilize the area that's not supposed to move, and it does so by strengthening the supporting structures of the spine, which are the ligaments, the facet joints, um, and in an attempt to permanently fix it, it forms bone spurs. If given enough time, the bone spurs from the vertebral body below and the vertebral body above will slowly, slowly, slowly grow together until they can't touch each other and the bones will then fuse and the motion will stop. Unfortunately, it doesn't care whether there's a nerve in the way. So it will continue to grow and will pinch the nerve and that's where people tend to get a lot of problem. So what we see here is this is what the canal is supposed to be like and now you see the overgrowth of the facet joint and the ligaments and you see how narrow the spinal canal becomes. So we can't draw cartoon pictures, all we have are MRIs. And so what you see here on, the, on your right is a normal MRI. This is front, this is back, and by convention this is left and this is right and that's because we're cutting you in half and we're looking up at you from the bottom. This area here, this white area here with the little black dots which look like spaghetti cut on end, they're all, those are all the nerves that are going down to your legs. It's filled with fluid, and so we call that the thecal sac, and that's the spinal fluid. And this is the normal configuration. There's a hole here and a hole here. That's called a neuroforamen. That's where the nerves exit. Here we go to a stenotic region. The first thing you notice is you don't see this white fluid. That's because the spinal canal, which was like this, is now being compressed into something like this. It's dark because all these nerves that are spread out within the sac are now all crunched together. This joint in this dark line here is markedly thickened. These holes are markedly narrowed, and this disc is bulging into the canal. So a combination of a disc bulging, thickened ligament, and thickened joints causes the spinal canal to become narrow. That causes a pinching of the nerves and the symptoms that you experience. So this sort of a cascade of events that occurs over a long period of time. You get disease or arthritis in the facet joints that causes a slippage and causes enlargement of the joint to strengthen it, which causes narrowing of the holes where the nerves come out. You have the disc that has a bunch of injuries to it that shrinks and then bone spurs form. All these things lead to, to entrapment or compression of the nerve that leads to stenosis and that directly impacts your quality of life. So here's a little schematic little cartoon. As the disc shrinks, you see the hole gets more narrowed and it pinches the nerve. And then you have pain that shoots down your leg. Also, as the joint becomes arthritic, it allows your bones to slip, it can also narrow the hole and cause pressure on the nerve and pain to shoot down your legs. So how do people generally present with s s symptoms of spinal stenosis? Well, people come to see me because of back pain. Generally, it's worse when you're standing and walking. It generally is better when you're sitting. People say that if they go to the supermarket and lean over a shopping cart, you can walk for a much longer distance. And I'll show you why that is, but if you think about it, if you have thickened ligaments and, and, and the nerves are being pressed, if you bend forward, those holes are going to open up. And so you find yourself stooping over with your cane, walking like this, or leaning over a shopping cart like this. When you get up and walk a distance, you start to get maybe some pain in the back, some pain in the buttocks, some pain in the back of the legs, maybe even pain in your calves. And that's because the nerves aren't get, are being pinched and not getting enough blood, enough oxygen, and your body's telling you, look, you've got to stop doing what you're doing, sit down, when you sit down, what happens is you, your spine goes into flexion, 
it stretches the ligaments, it opens up the holes, the blood's able to get to the nerves, the nerves say, okay, we're fine, you can get up and move around, and that's why you have to stop and sit down. And as you see here, um, this is what happens when you stand because your body has to maintain its posture. So you have a little bit of extension. That causes the ligaments that are back here to buckle. And on the side they buckle. And when you bend forward, it all opens up, as you can see here. This little red area depicts where there's going to be pressure on, on the nerves. And when you bend forward, the pressure goes away. Here, looking at it from front to back, the ligaments press here and cause pressure on the nerves, and as you bend forward, the pressure goes away. So now that we know what it is, what can we do for you? Well, not everybody needs surgery. Um, some people's symptoms of spinal stenosis are very mild, and some are very debilitating. Oftentimes, we can treat you with just lifestyle modification. Well, just don't walk as far take frequent breaks. If you know that you get pain when you walk a mile, we'll walk half a mile and sit down, relax, and then walk another half a mile. Lean over a shopping cart when you walk. Sometimes physical therapy can help. Um, physical therapy has been proven to help some people some of the time in the short term, but has been proven to not be of any uh, great long-term benefit. Some people are able to get injections in the back. Injections in the back are designed to reduce inflammation. People are given steroids. Steroids reduce inflammation. So when you have a pinch, when a nerve gets pinched, it swells. It swells inside a confined space, gets pinched more, and swells more. And you start to get into this tremendous cycle of nerve pinching and swelling and more nerve pinching. The steroid injection will reduce that. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't get rid of the reason that you have the problem which is why the results with epidural steroid injections are almost universally short-lived. And so that's why you, you don't tend to not get lots of them. Of course, when there's severe cases, people can't walk or they've got tingling in their feet that someone's been told they have peripheral neuropathy, which is really some, oftentimes you have such bad spinal stenosis that you feel tingling in your legs. Often that's when people need to have surgery. And when I counsel people, I say, as long as there's no neurologic problem, like you don't have a, a, a dropped foot or any weakness, if it's just pain, I say, look, you're going to tell me when you want surgery. When the pain begins to interfere with your life, you find that you're avoiding social situations because the pain is just too severe. You can't engage in those activities that make life enjoyable. Then you might want to consider surgery. If the pain's a mere annoyance, I would recommend not having surgery and wait until the pain does start to bother you. That being said, there is something that's a little bit in between that isn't quite as invasive or destructive, and it's called uh, an X-stop. And you want to think of the X-stop as like a door stop. It keeps, keeps you from going backwards. It keeps the door open, keeps the spine open. And we'll talk about that in detail in just a second. Um, Again, this is just sort of, there was a, you know, we don't just sort of do things because that's what we do. We actually study and, and do trials because, you know, you can go and give someone a steroid injection and they did great, and you can go give someone a steroid injection and they did poorly. And so when you talk to your friends and relatives about, oh, I have this problem, and they say, oh, I had the same problem, I did great. Well, that's an N of one. We want to know how does this affect people over hundreds and hundreds of patients because then we can say to you that yes, this is an effective treatment for a large number of people or no, this is an ineffective and that the relief that you got was just a coincidence or luck. The American Academy of Neurology um, did a study in 2007 and what they found was that yes, steroid injections can help some people um, up to weeks and months, but it really has no effect in, for your long term for the reasons that we discussed. It doesn't get rid of the problem that caused the, the pinched nerve. And so, again, its r routine use uh, has been discouraged. 